Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm here with Donovan Jolly at DIY Investing and he is one of my fellow longtime friends, YouTubers and investors. For today's video, we're gonna be talking about Bitcoin back in the early days in 1516 when we first got into it and then comparing it with the cycles that we're seeing today. So I'm gonna start off by talking about Bitcoin when I first got into it because I actually had been watching Bitcoin around 2015 when it first started to bottom out at around $180 per coin. And I remember seeing the Bitcoin cycle and seeing that it had been going sideways for about a year. And there really wasn't that many altcoins at the time or that much talk right. about altcoins, but 2016 is actually when like Ethereum right. and like the altcoin markets started to take their spotlight from there. So Bitcoin actually took the spotlight first. And if you look at what's happening in today's market, I mean, you've seen Bitcoin recently. Bitcoin definitely went first, huh? Yeah, it's been it's been crazy to see kind of the change in the structure from when we first got in. I bought my first Bitcoin at $450, and so it was really that first disbelief phase that we saw. A lot of people did not think it was actually gonna go up from 400 out, I remember. Trading view back when we first got into it. Nobody thought that Bitcoin was going to go up back in the day. No, and it was really still super underdeveloped. The only time you really heard about Bitcoin was through darknet markets and just scams in general. Yeah. That was really the only coverage that it got. You got a little bit of attention towards like the top of the 13 cycle, but really for the most part, it was super underground. Nobody had heard about it. And that's what made it so tricky to kind of get involved with it early on was just nobody knew about it. And so it was hard to get involved and get on exchanges and just yep. knowing what you could trust. And by 13 cycle, he means when Bitcoin hit just over 1100 per coin, the whole Mount Gox thing and then Mount Gox crashed and then Bitcoin fell all the way back down to 180 in 2015 when we got into it. Right. Well, I got in 2015, you got in at 2016, you said? Yeah, at the first of 2016, right when we first broke out of those uh, lows that we saw at around the $200 range. Yeah, and what was your first altcoin that you remember actually buying? Because we used like Poloniex mainly back in the day right. as our first major exchanges. Right, I mean, uh, before I talk about that, I probably think it'd be important to talk about kind of when I first got into it. So I got, I first got into Bitcoin from you. You told me about it. You first introduced me to it. Um, we came over to your house one time and you kind of just, you had this sly little look on your face. I remember I was sitting on your bed and he looks over, he's at his computer and he looks over and he says, you ever heard of Bitcoin? And that was, I, I, I told him that I never had and he kind of brought me over and he showed me this chart. And that was just right after Bitcoin had broke out of $450 at that bottom of 200. And he showed me this and he said, this is the future. It, you don't need banks to send money. Um, it's anonymous. And he just started talking about all of the average things that you heard about Bitcoin from back in the early, early days. Early Bitcoin days. like really libertarianism like right. political belief system bitcoin and it day. was it was probably about a week later that i actually bought my first bitcoin um on coinbase uh then that's when i first started actually trading and i would say probably the start of 2017 right at the very beginning of that uh year i made my first trade ever and i actually bought ethereum when it was at five dollars and then it had its first little leg up to eight dollars before it went all the way up to I like 450 that. or something and so that was the first buy that i ever had and so it's interesting to see kind of back in the early days with ethereum valued at five dollars and now it peaked at like 1450 and so it's really crazy to see how much how the big. market's changed yeah so much bigger now and people think like People say crypto small, and yeah, crypto is really small, you guys, compared to what we both think it's going to be in the future. But like, compared to like, you know, eight billion, fifteen billion, twenty billion in right. total market cap across all the coins, like back in the day. Right. Crypto, crypto has grown a lot, you guys, and we're actually really lucky to see so many interesting projects, so many altcoins, and I really don't see it as it being a reason to like get mad at all of these projects or different altcoins are <laughs> saying that they're all taking Bitcoin's dominance and stuff. We live in a really creative, flourishing cryptocurrency economy right now, even if people don't believe it yet. Right. I think it's important to touch up on that subject because it's something that gets brought up a lot 
recently with Bitcoin really taking the market dominance recently and altcoins kind of falling off. A lot of people have jumped onto that Bitcoin maximalist trend and they've really started dooming altcoins. And I think we that, love Bitcoin, but right. Like I, I would agree that I'm a Bitcoin maximalist. Bitcoin is what brought the majority of the market uh, that we're seeing here today. But at the end of the day, there's so much new upcoming technologies that are being developed from cryptocurrency and from blockchain technology that we can't just overlook all of what is going on by trying to attach that only there can be one source of payment or only one source of or store of value. When in actuality, a lot of these altcoins and cryptocurrencies, they're not necessarily a store of value or a currency, they fulfill a protocol. And, and so they're so different as far as what we normally view them. And so to say that only Bitcoins will survive, I think that that's more of a pessimistic approach. Yeah. They're all here together, whereas some of and them can will work together off. too and will work together exactly. as they're being continually developed together. <laughs> <We> got some <laughs> grasshoppers flying by today. <laughs> But there's definitely a lot of awesome altcoins right now. The volume that we're seeing is a lot bigger than the volume that we saw come in when Bitcoin started to bottom or when the alt started to bottom when we first were into it. So right. we're getting excited because we've seen the differences between the two cycles and we know how much bigger this one is going to be right. in comparison to that. And it's pretty easy to see the FUD too. Have you been seeing all the FUD come out? Oh, even still oh definitely and the interesting thing is we started seeing that first test of FUD back when Bitcoin broke out of those yearly lows in December and went up to about 5500 that was the first time that we started seeing FUD come out and I don't remember specifically what it was um, but there was a lot of stuff that started coming out right as we were heading to that resistance at 6k and that was the first defining moment where the FUD for the first time in over a year and a half hadn't affected price and we continue mm -hmm. to break up. And so now Broke you're right seeing through the FUD. Exactly. Now you're seeing the same sentiment with altcoins right now, whereas everybody's writing them off. They made They're their first mad at leg. Them. They hate the altcoins. Now. Exactly. And so there's a lot of indecision, but I feel as if we're at the same sort of point, whereas altcoins have always lagged behind Bitcoin. And I think that with Bitcoin having all this new institutional money really flooding into it over the last few months, it's kind of um, taking a little bit longer for the alts to catch up, but I think that they will. And when they do catch up, it's going to be something explosive. That yeah, that before. money will branch out. That money is going to branch out. All that money that went into Bitcoin, as long as Bitcoin keeps seeing money come in, and even if it sees a little bit of a drop over the next little while, alts have to pick up after a little while after that. It just it's the, what we've seen in previous cycles. Right. They have the volume profiles for it. Bitcoin dominance isn't going to take forever away from the altcoin dominance. Right. And they're extremely oversold. What are some of your favorite altcoins right now? I know you mentioned in one of your recent videos that you had some explosive gems that you were looking at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and one, uh... so I, I just wanted to hear some of your favorite alts that maybe I'll share some of mine too. Yeah. Litecoin for sure is one for me. I, th I don't think you can really go wrong with Litecoin. Um, yeah, my, one of my last videos I talked about some low cap gems that I've been watching. Now as far as my favorite low cap that I would talk about right now is just Darrow. And that's actually one that I came on with an earlier video. My first uh, collaboration that I did with Dallin was me talking about Darrow. And that's the one that I'm really excited for above all else. Right now it still has under 10 million in market cap. Yeah. And so with a really small circulating supply of like 10 million I believe, I don't think that it needs a whole lot of money to really go into the market cap for it to boost it to these insane price values considering that it's still trading for under a dollar today. Yeah, and comparing it to some of the other cycles that we've seen in the past, it looks like a really young and early cycle is the best way to describe it, meaning that it has a lot of explosive growth in the future. Right. And the chart is really small in comparison to what it's going to look like down the road. The, as we get more data and more time passes, it's really going to see a lot of growth from here. So yeah, I agree. Darrow is one of them for me. Um, I really like Litecoin, like I said. Other than that, we're still waiting for Ethereum to kind of pick up again. Ethereum Classic saw a pop off recently too, I was noticing. I think it's interesting that really what we've seen thus far is some of the older coins uh, 
a lot of them have made kind of a leg down in their cycles that I wasn't necessarily expecting. While as some of the other altcoins, they're showing a lot more strength in the yep. recent months. And so you have some, some of the, of the less coins. known alts. Right, there, there's some less known alts. Um, but what I would say is the, the drop that we saw out of the top 100 over the last year, it's completely changed. And going back through and charting all of these coins that are changed and moved through, there's so many that I haven't even recognized. But what I have noticed is a lot of these coins have fallen significantly. Some of them are showing signs of early accumulation. Rounded bottoms. Exactly. Stuff. But these older coins that have been around for the cycles, like Litecoin, like XMR, Ethereum, they're showing a lot more dominance inside of the market compared to the rest of the market share. Yep. So I think it's more important. A little more rep with, reputation. Exactly. And so I think it's important to note that with this next coming cycle, really the strongest bets to push put your money at the start, at least of this coming bull market would be to these older coins that have stayed the majority of the cycles and have XMR. been able to actually perform well. Yeah, XMR exactly. is one I really like. Even against the Bitcoin pair, if you look at XMR, has created a very complete cycle top mm -hmm. to bottom and, and looks like it's ready for a reversal on the Bitcoin pair. Right, so. I agree. But yeah, it's beautiful to see these two cycles. We're getting extremely excited. There's definitely going to be an altcoin pop, you guys. It's <laughs> pretty obvious to us at least at this point even if there's one more little jab down right. in the dominance with the alts and one more increase in the dominance with bitcoin we're expecting this season to come so yeah just hold on through it i know it's <laughs> yeah, been one stick of the with it, you guys. most difficult bear markets i mean for me personally this is the first bear market i've been able to trade and just the fact that it's taken over first a year and a half. First big one for both of us right? And in crypto. So. Just the fact that it took over a year and a half of just slow, bleeding markets where it wasn't a whole lot of volatility throughout the big, big majority of that. But I do feel as if we are, like you said, at that point where we're going to start to see some really explosive things coming. And so the people that held through thus far are the ones that are going to reap the rewards. And so the fact that you are this far, you can really pat yourself on the back because not many have been able to do it up to this point. Yeah, seriously. Seriously. And I really appreciate all of you guys that have been watching my videos and subscribing to Donovan as well and making it through this whole cycle because it's going to be well worth it for all of us. I can tell you that for sure. It's pretty easy to see once you start to understand the market cycles and mm -hmm. see the volume coming in. It, it, it's a good long term perspective for the industry as a whole. So, is there anything else you guys you want to touch up on today? I think that's mostly what I want to talk about so yeah I think that's about everything for me really all to touch up on everything just thank you all so much for the support recently my channel has been performing really well and it's just been awesome to kind of get back in touch with Dallin work on some productions with him we just had a lot of fun trading in years past and so with this next cycle coming up like I'm really just looking forward to being able to ride it out with the rest of you guys because you don't have to be some super top-notch trader or some experienced investor to make a lot of money in this market just by taking smart investments yeah. and really playing your cards this is right true. you can change your life completely and I've seen it happen time and time again and so that's really why I'm so passionate about being here and sharing my story and then being able to kind of get as many people involved with this movement as I can, as I'm sure Dallin can agree with. I completely agree with what Donovan is saying, and I will say this too. I've met a lot of really intelligent people throughout my trading career, and sometimes the people that just keep things the most simple and don't try to overcomplicate or right. show how smart they are or have 10,000 indicators <laughs> or you know say that they have 50,000 trading bots and all of this stuff, Sometimes those people don't make the most money. Sometimes the people that make the most money are the ones that go, oh, Bitcoin dropped 84%. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put some money in now, and I'm going to sell years down the road. I'm going to buy an extremely undervalued asset, and I'm going to sell down the road. So that's kind of my advice to you guys as well to remember that. And I really love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today's video. And we will see you guys in the next one. As always, stay profitable out Peace there. Peace out. Peace. <laughs>